Thank you so much to Current for sponsoring this video. Please stick around to the end of the video so you can learn how to manage your money your way. Hey, I have seen you around this neighborhood. I'm calling the police. This is insane. Don't you even think about going anywhere. I'm waiting on the manager. You just clearly stated that you're going to be putting that on social media. I spot. This is, this is ridiculous. Man. What if I told you that a movie named Karen about a bigoted racist white woman named Karen exists and it was released this year? My wife and I sat down and watched this movie and I can confirm that it's completely insane. I can't believe this movie exists. Wow, they're like taking this stereotype and really running with it, aren't they? Like, if you don't comply, I'll tell the manager. The poor Karens of the world. And I thought men named Jeff or Chad had it bad. <laughs> God damn, it must suck to be a Karen in today's world. I can guarantee that not a single baby born today is going to be named Karen. That name is dead, people. Nobody is using it anymore. <laughs> and it's thanks to movies like this. Dude, I have an aunt named Karen. I do. And she's a sweet lady. She's nothing like these Karens that people are showing all over the world. So I just feel bad for all of them. I think I would probably just change my name to Ren if my name was Karen. <laughs> Hello, my name's Ren. Yeah, like from Ren and Stimpy. Please guys, put an F in the comment section for all of the poor Karens out there that are actually decent women. What a nightmare it must be to be named Karen. By the way, before I get too far into this review, please check out my second channel, Elvis the Human, where I upload little bite-sized like informational videos about random stuff I find on the internet that I think are fun. And also, if you like what I'm wearing in this video, uh, this hat or this shirt. Future. Alien baby, let's go! Or the shirt that Nick's wearing over here. Go over to AlienClothing.com, my personal clothing brand. I'm so proud of it, and thank you so much to all of you that support it. So anyway, before I start talking about the movie Karen, I would like to show a couple instances of Karens out in the wild. <laughs> The first one is with a Karen coming in contact with someone walking their pet pig. And this Karen did not like the pig. What do you have to say about that, Nick? Oh yeah, I hate that bitch. This woman didn't like a pig? Oh, we 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 don't stand. We do not stand. Okay, no, leave us I will, alone. I, I can call the association right now because go I go for it. Know. We gotta send Nicolas Cage after this woman. But seriously, she throws a fit over this pig just because it's a big animal. Oh, it's it's huge. It's a huge animal. So what? Another video shows a Karen forcing a girl to stop using her hula hoop because she was showing her belly in a public park. And this woman has won awards for using a hula hoop. I'm not sure how you do that, but she's a hula hoop champion. And this Karen is not having any of that belly. Everybody around here can see that you, you're half naked. Cover up, girlfriend. Here's a Karen at an airport. I'm the manager of the fucking airport here. You fuck off. Here's a Karen at Victoria's Secret. <laughs> I could go on all day, all year even. There's a lot of angry, vicious, strange white women out there. The angry, entitled white women are out in full force. Ah! And this movie is here to capitalize on that in the most awkward way possible. This movie stars Taryn Manning from Orange is the New Black, and it was directed and written by a guy named Coke Daniels. I wonder what his favorite soft drink is. <laughs> this is the first movie I'm seeing by this guy, but the ratings of his other films let me know that I'm probably not missing out on much. No joke, the first thing you see in this movie is the Karen scrubbing away the words Black Lives Matter that are written in chalk on the street. The movie starts with her doing this? Holy shit. That's a very bold entrance to a movie. Imagine playing the role of like a viciously racist person in a movie like this. It must be so awkward and like against everything you believe in, at least I hope so. While you're acting, you must feel so gross, you know? I know it's just acting, okay? I know it's like part of the job. You're not yourself, you're a different person. Technically, you're, like a, you're a character. I get it, okay? I get it. But it must still be so difficult and weird to act in those roles. So this woman is named Karen Drexler, and I can't help but feel bad for the real Karen Drexler, who's a national mental health program director for addictive disorders in Virginia. The irony of this woman having the same name, but being a professional and helping people with their mental health, it's insane. <laughs> this movie takes place somewhere in the suburbs of Atlanta. 
a black couple moves into a neighborhood with primarily white residents. And their neighbor is this nightmare woman named Karen Drexler. She's overtly racist, incredibly entitled, and to put it mildly, completely psychotic. I'm surprised they didn't make her blonde. So Karen is a stay-at-home mom that is the president on the HOA board. That's the Homeowners Association. The Black family is made up of husband Malik and wife Imani. The first thing that Karen does when the Black family moves in is install a camera that's pointed directly at their house. Karen then introduces herself to Malik in the rudest way possible. She refuses to shake his hand because she doesn't like germs, then tells him that she doesn't have any cash. We don't have any cash. Excuse me? Oh my God. As if they're like automatically criminals because of their skin color. She just assumes that they're going to steal her belongings. Wow. Then she plays it off as if it's a joke when clearly it's not. Then she bitches at him about not taking his trash barrel off the street immediately after his trash was picked up. To put the cherry on top of this racist vanilla cake, her brother is a racist police officer. I bet you guys can already tell where this is going. <laughs> Karen then has lunch with one of her racist lady friends. They talk about Karen's new neighbors. They talk about them as if they're a bunch of known terrorists that just moved in next door. They did leave their trash out on the curb after the trash had been picked up? Yes. <laughs> She then approaches these two black men that are eating at this restaurant. They're laughing, having a good time, and she orders them to keep it down. She literally says, if you don't comply, I'll tell the manager. Get it? Because that's the stereotype. Let me speak to your manager. The guys tell her that they'll keep it down. She heads back to her table. One of the guys barely giggles. Oh God, they're gonna make a noise again. What? <laughs> Uh-oh, she's gonna do something. So she immediately talks to the manager and has the men kicked out. That night, Karen finds Malik in his car. Like a weirdo, she taps on his window. FBI, open up! Malik is smoking weed and Karen doesn't like that. <laughs> Nick, do we like weed? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, Elvis, I'm high as fuck right now. Hell, Hell yeah, yeah, we, we do. do. Karen doesn't, obviously, because she doesn't like anything good. She doesn't like nice things. She only likes evil things. <laughs> she then literally tells him that they're infiltrating their neighborhood. Migrating from the cities and infiltrating the suburban neighborhood. <laughs> wow. Also, it's raining in this scene, and it's so clearly fake rain. <laughs> It's funny because her hair isn't wet at all. You'd assume that if it were raining that her hair would be wet, right? Karen asks him a bunch of questions about their occupations and their lives together. She's being super intrusive and condescending. She's a strong black woman. And does she wear the pants in the family as well? She's collecting information to use against them later. Imagine being racist and hating weed. What else doesn't she like? Ice cream, fun. In fact, I'm surprised there wasn't a scene where she stopped her son from playing a violent video game because it would have fit in perfectly. Later in the night, Malik and Imani talk about the coincidence of an entitled crazy lady that happens to be named Karen. We have a white entitled neighbor named Karen. And she's nosy as fuck. They reference the stereotype in this movie about a stereotype. It's so weird. Do you know what bums me out the most about this movie? Is that women like this exist. Like this is not made up, you know? It's like, you would assume this would be like a parody of people. No, there are crazy women like this out there and they're filmed every day and they're put on blast on Twitter. <laughs> I see them. So Karen's son is then seen spying on this couple undressing through the window. Why would this couple start to like have sex right in front of this window? <laughs> it's so clearly open for anybody to peek in. Like put the shades down or something, Jesus. Karen finds her son watching them and yells at him and dismisses him. Karen then watches after dismissing her son and it's almost as if she's like into it. Mm. What? She was into it. Kind of strange for a racist woman. Maybe she thinks it's exotic. <laughs> what is she getting out of watching these people? Like what? I'm confused. I bet super racist people out there really love porn of that race. Maybe it like feels taboo for them because they're not supposed to like it. <laughs> I was just looking for the sports channel, Gary. Karen then sits in the dark and smokes a cigarette like an evil supervillain and watches the cameras pointed at Malik and Imani's home. The next day, Malik introduces himself to Karen's son while he's playing basketball. He's very cordial and friendly and even gives him basketball tips. Karen exits the house Enemy spotted. and ruins everything, obviously. After dismissing her son, she asks Malik to put antifreeze in her car as if she couldn't do that herself. 
I mean, it's not that hard. If you don't know where to put it, just Google it. I guess this was her plan all along or something because then she strokes his arm while he's putting it in. <laughs> Wait, what is she doing? Why is this woman so weird? Is she trying to seduce this guy that she hates because of his skin color? Why, what? Is she trying to ruin their marriage or something? What is her end game? She then practically insists that he enter her home to clean up because he spilled some antifreeze on him. It's like she's trying to seduce him or something. Oh, 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 my bad. Malik is not having any of this and he just asks her where the bathroom is and he's like, stop talking to me, just tell me where the bathroom is. You wanna take this shirt off? I'm happy to wash it. No, it's fine. I just need you to direct me to the bathroom where I can wash my hands. Okay. On his way there, he enters a different room and finds the creepy surveillance area. It's showing the cameras that are pointed directly at their house. He enters the bathroom and no joke, finds a soap dispenser with a Confederate flag on it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Confederate soap. That is so dumb. <laughs> And there's even pictures of Confederate soldiers framed on the wall. I'm not sure if they're generals or what, but it's still so weird. When he gets back to his house, he tells Imani about the camera and her surveillance room and the soap dispenser. In retaliation, they have their own camera installed to point at Karen's house. <laughs> Take that, Karen. We're watching you right back. At an HOA meeting, Karen tells the other members about Malik and Imani. She exaggerates and makes them out to be terrible people. The wife purposely undresses in her bedroom, gives my son a complete peep show. <sighs> It's hilarious when she tells them about the fact that Malik was smoking weed. And I find her husband smoking marijuana. Marijuana. <laughs> They're like, so what? <laughs> And she's like, we dad. One of the other members is also super racist. And she says this. African-Americans do make significantly less than any other race, except for maybe Mexicans. And then another board member looks at her like, what the fuck? <laughs> Bruh. Karen does that typical thing that all these evil dumb people do. You know, they say like, it starts with weed, but then it turns into prostitution, drug deals. Murder. How far down this slope are we going, people? Huh? Soon it'll be nuclear bombs. <laughs> and she says this a lot. You know how these people are. These people? What do you mean these people? Huh? What do you what do you mean by that? What people? Exactly. Hmm? She's a bit of a lunatic, if that wasn't clear already, and assumes the rest of the board are just as psychotic as she is. Obviously they don't agree with her, and they don't do anything about Malik and Imani. So I guess she'll have to do it herself. Fine. I'll do it myself. Karen approaches Imani after her run and practically invites herself to their housewarming party. Well, I certainly didn't get the invite. She arrives at the party, and when she sees Imani, she says this. There she is slaving away in the kitchen. Come on, dude! <laughs> Ah! <laughs> but that's nothing compared to what she says later. Remember the guy that Karen had kicked out of the restaurant? Well, he's at this party. Karen is a Karen. Boy, God has a sense of humor. One of the people attending mentions BLM. And of course, Karen butts in and she says, well, actually don't all lives matter? Excuse you? Oh my God, they're going there. Oh no. It's so funny, like this Karen is obviously a terrible person, but she lacks the ability to read the room at all. Like there's not a single person in this house that will agree with her views, but she still needs to shout them out and make everybody super uncomfortable. Black lives matter. That's right. Don't all lives matter? So she's not only like a really awful person, but she's also incredibly entitled and thinks the universe revolves around her and that her views are the only real views. It's so painful to watch. During this scene, the camera darts from person to person and it's really annoying. Karen is of course incredibly insufferable as always. She says stuff like, you people are very angry. <laughs> And okay, pull the race card. And guess what else she says? Why do you guys always bring up the slavery thing? It happened so long ago. You know, she just regurgitates all the typical talking points of someone with this kind of mindset. She even says, if you don't like it here, just go back to Africa. Go back. To absolutely nobody's surprise, she's kicked out of their home. And before she's kicked out, she even says, I'm not even a racist. <laughs> It's funny how racist people always say that they're not racist, right? Later that night, Karen is creeping outside, waiting for one of them to exit the house. It ends up being Malik, the poor soul. He's then confronted by her again. She tries to apologize in the worst way by being incredibly condescending. The next day, Karen, like a big child, 
knocks over their trash, and scurries home. <laughs> Imani, believing it was the dog, cleans it up. Karen's daughter randomly comes out to talk to Imani. Not sure why she did that. I guess she wants to help her pick up her trash. Apparently, her daughter isn't racist yet, thank God. But she knows that her mom's racist, and she tells Imani that she hates her. Wow, a smart kid. She doesn't like black people. Well, I'm black. I know, she doesn't like you either. Isn't it just sad when a kid has more sense than a full grown adult? Because quite frankly, it's not as uncommon as you might think. Later in the movie, Karen finds these three guys walking down the street. Two of them are black, and I guess she wasn't aware that another black family lived in the area, and one of them says that he does. Obviously, she doesn't believe him because he's black. How could he live in the area? So she asks to see their IDs, and they refuse to show them to her. ID? What are you, police? I'm not showing you shit. I am the president of the Homeowners Association. Oh, okay. So in retaliation, she calls her brother, who's a policeman, and these guys are filming her while she does this. This scene is very reminiscent of what we normally see with Karens in the wild, because the guys film her with their camera phones. At times, this movie seems like a parody of real events, but sometimes the people in real life are actually worse than the Karen in this movie. <laughs> so her brother comes out of nowhere and has them arrested. While on the phone, she's backing away, and she's like, oh my god, they're being so aggressive. They're coming right at me. Oh no! <laughs> When they're not doing anything, they're just standing there. Oh my god, they're coming at me! She's- she's- we're, we're literally standing right- They do take the time in this movie to uh, create this backstory for Karen and her brother to kind of flesh out why they're so racist. But, like, do you care? No. I, I, I don't. Because of the bad publicity from the kid's arrest, Karen is voted off of the HOA board. Karen then practically stalks Malik and Imani through the rest of the movie, as if she wasn't kind of doing that already, but yeah, she goes above and beyond now. She reports Malik to the police, AKA her brother, so he can stop him and search his vehicle for weed. When he finally does stop Malik, he doesn't have any marijuana on him, so the cop plants some in his trunk and arrests him for it. This has made him worse because when they do stop Malik, he's going above and beyond to be like extremely compliant. It sucks that black people have to do this, but I totally understand why. He has this hands on a steering wheel and they're like, I'm 10 and two guy, 10 and two, look at my hands. I'm not doing anything. Please leave me alone. Later in the movie, Karen sits on the roof of their car. Imani goes outside to find Karen sitting on her car and she's way too nice to her. What the hell are you doing, Karen? Why are you on my car? To be fair, Malik and Imani are just way too nice to Karen in general. <laughs> <laughs> like throughout the entire movie, they're extremely polite, even though Karen is acting extremely racist. Karen basically tells Imani to leave the neighborhood and Imani tells her to go fuck herself. I'm so sorry for you, Karen, but you're gonna have to deal with it because we're not going anywhere. <laughs> Somehow the racist cop pulls some strings because he's in the brotherhood, which is like this network of cops that all have each other's back just in case something happens. So he gets a search warrant to look around their home. They enter and arrest Malik. Then there's this hilariously dramatic and silly scene where the camera like pans out from Karen standing in red light with a scowl and she's holding a handgun. <laughs> She's gone full wacko mode, guys. It kind of reminds me of Nicolas Cage from the movie Mandy in a bunch of scenes. Isn't that right, Nick? I, I guess so, yeah. Karen then cuts the power to their home and breaks in while Imani watches. Here's Johnny. Karen enters the house and puts on a Southern twang randomly. <laughs> she goes, come on, girlfriend, let's do this. Come on, girlfriend, let's do this. <laughs> Karen calls her brother and her brother arrives at the house. Eventually, Karen and her brother corner Imani in a room. Both of their guns are drawn on her. Karen then shoots her in the face. At least that's what I thought. And I was very much caught off guard. I was like, holy shit. Wow, they they just went there. Boy, no fucking shit. There's this cop in training that follows around Karen's brother. He's a decent enough guy. Do you even know who I am? I know the fuck you are, you're a racist piece of shit. So he enters the room after they shoot Imani, and he's like, yo, that's fucked up. So he pulls his gun on them. Everybody just calm down. Both of the cops shoot each other. Oh shit! The decent cop shoots the evil cop in the face, and the evil cop shoots the decent cop in the chest. Karen is about to kill the decent cop until, surprise, surprise, Imani is still alive. Surprise, motherfucker. And she shoots Karen. She then, like, comically flops to the ground. Yeah, the acting is not the best. 
I do not expect anybody in this movie to win an Oscar. At the end of this movie, there's a speech against bigotry, racism, and discrimination, while this gentleman plays the trumpet. And during the credits, there's like this weird, like James Bond style ending with a dancer and like all these bright colors. Pretty fancy. Is this a new movie? So yeah, guys, I can't believe this movie is a thing. Pretty hilarious that this actually exists. This is basically like if you ordered a Jordan Peele movie from wish.com. <laughs> when I initially saw the trailer for this movie, I thought it was like from an SNL skit or something. But no, this movie is real. I know because I just watched it. It's insanity. This movie tries to be like a dark and current thriller that deals with harsh topics. But other times it seems like it's trying to be this SNL type of like self-aware satire, but neither works. This movie is abysmal in every way. This movie wasn't subtle at all and it was just painful. Ooh. Yeah, we get it. People like this are out there and they're evil. It's kind of hilarious to me that the director's name is Coke because he must have been sniffing something to think this movie was a good idea. <laughs> oh my God. It's just hilarious to me that there was like no care taken in making a movie like this, dealing with such like harsh topics that are very real in today's world. This movie just feels like a big joke. But anyway, that's what I thought of Karen. Hey guys, Elvis from the future here. I'd like to take a moment to talk to you about Current, the future of mobile banking. When I first got into finances, I wish Current existed. I used to have to go to a bank, walk up to the teller, who was usually a Karen. They didn't want to be there, you could tell. And in order to do anything, I had to fill out a form. And usually there's people waiting behind me, so I had the pressure of doing it quickly. And the teller always seemed very irritated with me. You don't have to talk to a soul. It's all on your phone. It's so easy to use. Use. You can use it to send and receive money from your friends. They send you a Visa debit card that you can use practically anywhere. And guys, seriously, if you want an easy solution to your finances, sign up for Current. Go to current.com slash Elvis or click the link at the top of the description and take advantage of this very simple solution to manage your finances. Thank you so much to Current for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you thought of this movie in the comment section down below. If there's any other movies you'd like me to review, please put them in the comment section. Thank you so much to all my patrons. I love you guys so much. If you haven't already, please go to alienclothing.com, my personal clothing brand. We sell a lot of clothes from the future. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Oh my goodness, just another day in white America. What are you doing? Why are you watching this video? Get out of here! Go! Click off of this right now! What are you doing? I'm gonna call the police. I'm calling the police on you. Click off of this video now! I swear to God! <laughs> They're bullying me in the comments! They're bullying me in the comments! Help! <laughs> oh my god, they're being aggressive. They're being aggressive. They're coming right towards me. Help! 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 They're pulling out their iPhones. They're filming me! No!